All right, what is going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. We are going back to the beginnings of West Desert Wheeler with the 1.9 Wraith. Now, I was into RC and I bought a Losi Nightcrawler. I traded that for an original Axial SCX-10 and I sold it off when I was about 16. I got back into RC crawling like 2018, 2019 and the 1.9 Wraith is what I went in and picked up from West Valley Hobbies. I just walked in the shop, saw that it looked cool, and was like, all right, I'll try that. I knew Axial, and I knew that they made good stuff. So I brought that home, and then I started an Instagram called West Desert Wheeler. I already had a firearms content page, West Desert Shooter, so the name seemed pretty obvious. Just change it to Wheeler, easy, it's done. So that's where West Desert Wheeler started and came from. A couple years later, after having an Instagram for a while, I decided to start my YouTube channel when I had lost my job and decided to go full time on YouTube and create a new page, West Desert Wheeler, and that's where this comes from. So let's go back to the beginnings. My buddy Luke with Scumbag RC was very kind and got some more of our friends together to, to uh, actually gift me this 1.9 Wraith. So I'm very appreciative of that. Everyone who contributed, I really appreciate it. So this was used. Uh, Axial no longer makes this truck. This one was in pretty good shape and it was almost completely original. I took it and took it completely apart and took a base camp kit and uh, Axial's new base camp straight axle kit and I grafted all the components into this guy. So this looks like a standard 1.9 Wraith. However, it's got SCX 10.3 straight axles under it. And then it's also got the LCXU transmission. And if we look at the backside, I installed the dig unit. Of course, we got some lit LED uh, green rock lights going on on here. My original one was orange, this one's black. Let's go hit the rocks and check out one of the trails that I originally made with my 1.9 Wraith. We're gonna go run it again with my 1.9 Wraith. If you guys have gone back and watched one of my first videos, this is like one of my first videos on my channel is going out and running this trail. So super fun to uh, bring it back to where it all started. Now Sand Hollow has, we've been getting crazy weather over the last week and we've had more rain in the last week consistently than like the whole time I've lived here. So there's a bunch of sand that has been just eroded out of the way with all the water flow. So there's a ton of rocks exposed right now, which should be awesome for our rock crawling. However, the sand is still moist, so we're gonna be getting sand on our tires, which will not help us on traction. So we may struggle on a few things, but that's okay. Wow, very interesting. So along with all this crazy weather we've been having, there's this big boulder sitting down in the bottom. This is like one of the defining features on this climb and kind of something we had to work around. So there's actually new obstacles that are open now. I'm not sure if a rock crawler, like an actual buggy came up and tried to climb through here and knocked that rock out or if it was just the weather, but uh, I, don't, I don't immediately see any evidence that it was a car. So usually this rock sat like right here and you go up to the side and crawl around it. So I've never driven up this before. Let's, let's see how this goes. Got a great big ledge on the left side. Nice, just pushed into it. Front end came right up and over. The rear may get very interesting. I don't know if this car will do it tonight, but it's all good. Now I do have plans in the future to add some weights to this in the front and uh, you know, make it a little more performance based. Nothing crazy, just some brass knuckles, something. But uh, it's got dual stage foams in it. It's got Proline G8 Super Swampers. These are brand new, they're not scrubbed in. Got a set of Vanquish method wheels that I've had laying around for a little while. They've just kind of moved from truck to truck and they ended up on this Wraith. I really like the bronze on the black and I've got some scale hardware coming in for it as well. So, yeah, it's not quite gonna go up the middle. Let's see if we can force it up the top. So we got a Hobbywing Fusion Pro in the car. And then for servo, we got a Shift GT3S. This is our low profile, like 800 ounce inch servo. If I had more front weight, I think I could get this. Damn. But very interesting, because uh, that was, like I said, kind of a defining feature of this trail. So got new lines to play with with the other vehicles now. Oh, that was almost it. 
Nice, nice. That's a really difficult one to get. Sweet. Now, if you guys notice, this rear axle housing is not an SCX-10-3 housing. This is a Vanquish straight axle housing uh, from like a straight axle Phoenix, but I really like the fabricated housing look. And it turns out you can swap all the AR-45 straight axle internals, ring and pinion and axle shafts, everything just swaps in the plastic housing. This is an axial AR-45 rear components all inside that Vanquish plastic housing. We are not making this right now, I can tell you that. Oh look, hi Sydney. Hey, Sydney. Can you say hi to your followers? Hey, sit, say hi. Say hello to everybody. Sydney is my trail dog. It's been a little while since we've been out, so she's excited to get out of the house, like me. All right, this is one of the reasons we call it risk up this big ledge here, and it ends up being a very steep climb. Let's see if we can crawl it. I don't think we will. Oh man, that was close. A little momentum goes a long way on this one. Quite enough. Woo, doing a wheelie. Whoops. All right, steady drive on up. Oh man, carried a tire, but it pulled right up and over. Nice. Here is the reason this trail is named Risk. On the edge of this cliff, loose rocks. It's tilted out off camber towards the cliff. And then you end up on this little ledge. Just the perfect width for a scale crawler. I'm gonna cruise on by. Make the corner. Try not to fall off myself. All right guys, should we get crazy with it? See what happens? This probably isn't a great idea. Ooh, buddy. Let's back up more before we start to turn. Okay, now check this out. SCX 10.3 dig unit and the LCXU transmission. Because remember, this is a base camp ender here. Allows us to turn and pivot right around. There we go. I do have plans to get reefs. Uh, either a Smart 179 or a Micro 99 servo for the shifting duties. Uh, unfortunately, it's a holiday weekend. Sky RC was closed, so it's all good. There we go. Nice. Man, the front weights in these cars make such a big difference. When I originally crawled for like the first couple of years, I never really put weights in my cars. I was watching some of my older videos with my original Capra and whatnot, and I didn't run weights in that. Knowing now, like what a difference it makes, man, it's crazy some of the stuff that I did pull off back then. Trying to get our rears realigned on this. A little more straight approach and then hooking that driver front on this ledge. Should pull us up. Nice. This usually has more dirt around this. This could get interesting. This is a big ledge now. Hasn't always been this way. We're gonna get those fronts to really get a bite and pull the car in hard like that. Oh, close. Oh, so close. A little too much sauce. Like I need to bump it and get it to hook up top without going crazy. I'm gonna get my skid right through that little notch. That's the perfect lineup. Give it a good solid bump here. We may have to bypass this one, that's okay. The terrain changes out here. That's one of the things that makes Sand Hollow fun. It's dynamic.
made our way up and around. This is pretty boring, it's just flat rocks. Here we go. Man, I am such a fan of the 1-9 Wraith. Like, just the idea behind it. Take a scale truck and turn it into, like, a scale buggy. Not, not quite, like, full crazy buggy like a Capra, but, like, something maybe like a Bronco that was converted into a buggy. It's just rad. Like, I like that idea a lot. I would like to see another iteration of it. See a modernized 1-9 Wraith with better components, because the original 1-9 Wraith was essentially completely plastic. And so to see one like this with the base camp internals, it's a lot better car. Oh, buddy. Okay. Let's see if she'll stick. No, that's not looking good. So I'm gonna move this rock, but use the car to do it. There we go, it's not stacking rocks if the car itself does it, right? See that dig servo, just, just a little bit weak to get that thing to snap in and out how I want. The dig unit itself works really well. Axial change the way that the uh, the dig unit actually engages in this and put some beveled edges on the teeth so it will help snap it into place. Oh, that's money right there. Not if that rear rock moves. Oh, damn, hold on to it, Wraith. <laughs> okay, we lost the front. So let's just bring it off that ledge. Should settle the car in. You gotta love these fusions, man. Just the ability to creep like they do. This is not an obstacle you can bump. Just need about half an ounce in the front knuckle and it would save us. All right, well, when you fail that line, you get to take the super sketchy bypass, so we're gonna take the super sketchy bypass. Off camber, narrow, on the edge of a cliff that's on top of a cliff. What, I can't imagine a single thing that could possibly go wrong. Oh look, Sydney. Hey puppy. Part of the bypass is you have to run over this obstacle because you gotta get style points somehow, right? So has anybody like picked up a straight axle base camp kit? Anybody enjoying it? You guys have complaints about it? Curious to hear your thoughts. So I had to modify this Wraith to get the base camp skid plate to fit. The Wraith skid was wider than the base camp skid is. So what I did is I had some old Rock Pirates RC rails laying around and I cut them and used them as spacers because they were also already perfectly drilled for both skid plate uh, widths. There's two screws that go into your skid on any crawler uh, per side and they're different widths from the 10.3 skid to the 1.9 race skid. So the Rock Pirates essentially acted as an adapter and spacer for me. So it worked out really good. There's about an inch and a half of Rock Pirates interceptor in this truck. So you could say it's uh, on interceptor rails. There we go. Nice. Killer. This dig unit certainly helps out in certain situations where it just makes it convenient to get that rotation when you want it or use it as a drag brake. Oh, man, I thought I about lost my truck. 
Now this rock right here used to be like an overhang area and it used to drive up on the side of the rock and side hill underneath it. It was a really cool line. And that formation fell a little while ago as well, probably over a year now. But uh, now you just gotta kinda just pass on by and figure out a way through here. It's slick and muddy today, so it's not gonna be pretty. Let's see if we can get on the rock and straddle it. Beautiful. All right, rear's gonna start dipping in. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Come on, nice. That was wild. There's a big hole in there. Look how sideways we are, this is awesome. And then the rear's gonna try and fall on that hole, so we're gonna keep the front high on the driver's side. Kind of saved us. We're gonna front burn off of that rock, reposition ourselves, and go up this hill. Or attempt to go up this hill. Oh, it's so close. Let me get our rears further passenger before we start rotating. Super, super close. Nice, nice, come on. All right, Swamper saved the day on that one. And come split the difference out the top. I gotta say guys, for a first run, this thing's doing pretty good. This is its maiden shakedown run. And uh, just did a little bit of backyard wheeling and then just flexing it out on the bench and paying attention to how the three link setup was working. The three link isn't perfect on this. It's got a little bump steer in it and uh, as it articulates, you lose a little steering angle. But overall, for the conversion, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. All things considered, it's pretty much a bolt-on. I did have to modify my pan hard and my drag length to be the correct length that needed to space the axle correctly while also having similar lengths. I got them as close as I could because that's what three lengths require. Now, if you guys watch my channel enough, you know that I am not a fan of stacking rocks, but some obstacles, it's just necessary. And this is kind of a pinch point on the trail to where you just have to do it to be able to get up into this crack. The crack is a cool obstacle, even with the stacked rocks. So I, I call it a wash. I think it's worth it. So we're just gonna try and finesse our way up in here. Let's scrub those sidewalls just the right amount to get those rears to pull up. Beautiful. I've done this with an RC four-wheel drive Marlin, which is pretty wild, but uh, it's always fun to get it right. And it's been a long time since I actually took the time to stack the rocks again and make it work, because most of the time I come out, they're not stacked correctly and they don't work. Now, you can really put the cherry on top of this one by setting yourself up just right putting it in dig, using that right rear as a pivot point. And getting yourself set up and swinging it all the way around. Nice. Quick little trail 180. Made it look good. Really having a good time with this 1.9 Wraith. Super happy to have one in the collection again. Always one of my favorite spots. You get the killer view in the background. You get the truck right in your face. Watch the suspension work, go over ledges, watch the tires grab. Drag the skid and the links through. Beautiful. Got our cold ones in the back of the Wraith. cooler was given to me by my brother Preston. Nice. 
that's why it's in the back of this race. Oh, hi, Sid. What you doing? You hitting the hard lines, pup? He's looking for pets. Always looking for pets. Ooh, buddy. Hard on the links in the rear. Gotta get rubber to the rocks, not links on the rocks. I think if I set my rear up a little different, I might be able to rotate it around. Come on. Come on. Ooh. Ah, so close. Come on. Oh, come on. Damn. It almost worked perfect. And then it didn't work at all. So, you know. There it is. Sick. A little bump. It's always a bump. You always got to give it a bump. In an effort to set myself up well, I decided to monster truck that bush. Get as close to this wall as I can to make the drop as small as possible. There we go. Dig is engaged. The rear is going to drag. Let's see if we can get her to gently set on in here. And then front wheel drive only, so once those car slides, I can give it some throttle and we'll pull the front out. Well, it sounded good on paper. This obstacle, man, I've had my ass kicked on this obstacle in every RC crawler I've ever built. It's possible, but you have to just like full on commit and full throttle over it. And you gotta get it just right. With this wide of a skid on this car, I don't know if it'll ever do it, honestly. I don't remember if I got my 1.9 right to do this originally. I know I have a video of a capper making it. But without front weight, it's very difficult. Oh, that hit me right in the shin. Some of those mold lines are starting to peel off of these uh, super swampers. They're in the first stages of being broken in. Hopefully I can be cool like Bonebox Brian and get some racing slick swampers someday. But you gotta earn those. You gotta wheel the hell out of your rig to get them that bald. And I don't cheat. I go out there and I run. Like I was saying, I don't cheat with breaking in my tires and scrubbing them in. You just gotta run a lot of V-notches and aggressive terrain. Eventually the tread starts to go away. I think it looks super cool when it does too. And it, every time I see like a super bald RC tire that I can tell is like driven, I, I get it man. Like props to that guy because you had to earn it. It's typically not the line I go for, but tonight it'll work. And this is going to finish it up on this crossover for the end of our trail risk. With the 1.9 Wraith, it is back. This one is not going anywhere. Very grateful to have this car and awesome. Very grateful to have the friends who uh, cared to give it to me as well. So thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. It meant a lot this year. So uh, thanks guys. Say goodbye, Sydney. Hope you all enjoyed the content. Be sure to hit the affiliate links down below. I will leave some for you. Might not be this car, but if you buy anything through the affiliate link, you just click on the link, go to A-Main or Horizon, buy anything on their site, and uh, it will kick me a couple bucks, and I would appreciate it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down. <laughs>